Hello, and welcome back to Off Grid Style with Tom and Nikki. I am Nikki, and today we're discussing how to live more simply and actually be happy. We have so much pressure on us to buy the latest and greatest and get new instead of dealing with what we already have or fixing what we already have or repurposing it. So that's what this video is about. Having a smart financial practice in your life can lead to better financial stability, long-term security, less stress. Um, it does take 30 days to make a habit. This one may take you a little longer, but just to get used to it, but you will get there. Um, using these tips, you will be happier. And I can tell you it is a huge relief not to owe money. So let's get started on how you can live more simply and happier. Budgets and tracking expenses. This is actually pretty easy to do. Everybody groans when you say budget or make a budget. Just grab your last six months worth of your online bank statements or paper bank statements if you get those and look for anything that you purchased that was a want and not a need. Examples, how much did you spend on wants like uh, subscriptions, um, impulse buys of things that you didn't really have to have right then. Create a detailed budget with income, expenses, and all those things added in first. And then add in a little wiggle room for the extras to uh, make you feel a little bit like you're getting what you want as well as what you need. But eliminate anything that you're really not getting any value out of. So write down your needs first. You know, this may be your food, utilities, rent and mortgage. Perhaps you have some other bills that are included in that that you have to pay every month. Prioritize these needs. They must come first, obviously. So you've identified your wants by how you spent money on your bank statements. Are any of those a priority or a must-have? If they're not, get rid of them. Take time to evaluate your purchases and your purchase habits, your spending habits, and ask yourself if any item that you are interested in or want is something that is going to help you, aid you, or be an important part in some way towards your own financial freedom and financial goals. Cooking at home. This is actually a very, very expensive thing that you will eliminate simply by cooking at home. I can tell you that when I did this, and I do it about every six months, I review my budget and how much I'm spending. I was spending $500 to $800 per week on going out and getting food or buying food at a drive through or whatever the case might be. By cooking at home, I am now spending on average about $200 to $250 a week. So that's a huge difference in cost. Plan your meals. Make a grocery list and stick to it. This will help keep you from impulse buying. But also, while you're at the store, look for BOGOs, look for on sale items, buy in bulk. Also prepare your lunches for work as well whenever possible. Shop for second-hand items whenever you can and whenever it's appropriate. Also use coupons, shop sales, sign up for rewards plans. Almost everybody has them now with the stores that you shop at the most. As an example, right off the top of my head, your grocery store and your gas station. Those are two major expenses that you have pretty much every week. Sign up for their rewards programs. Stop using credit cards to purchase things. Stop using them. They are eating you alive. The average credit card now it has a 20 to 25 percent interest rate. That is horrid. 
So allocate X number of dollars out of your budget, whatever you can afford, and take it and begin putting it towards that extra money, putting it towards one bill or one card or one debt that you have. Put that extra money towards that until you pay that one off. Then you move on to the next one on your list. Take the money you are paying plus the extra and from the first card and start applying that to the second card or debt. Once that one's paid off, take all of that money, including the extra, apply it to the third one. This is the fastest way for you to get out of debt. And this is something you have to do, and I will tell you, you will sleep at night knowing that you don't owe on those loans and, and credit cards. Set aside money for an emergency fund. Even if it's just a few dollars a pay period, let's say you can only afford to put $20 away, that is better than what you have now, which is nothing. And that will grow. And as time goes on and you begin paying off those other debts that you do not need, you will be able to allocate more money towards the emergency fund. Another great thing to do is to allocate an automatic amount of money that is transferred from your checking account every time you get paid to a savings account. Just go ahead and automatically have it withdrawn. It could just be a few bucks again, 20 bucks a pay period or whatever the case might be, but have it sent to a savings account and do not touch that savings account. Let that savings build. Treat it like any other bill that you have to pay every month. It's non-negotiable and you do not use it. When signing contracts or purchasing large items, see if you can negotiate a lower price. I'll give you a couple examples. Uh, your cell phone bill, your internet, cable TV, and satellite TV. All of these have uh, departments that are called customer retention departments. And if you call up and you nicely complain about how much you're paying, especially if you see an ad for new customers to pay a whole lot less, which we all have as a have that happen to us. Go ahead and state that you are wanting to cancel and you would like to speak to the customer retention department. Some of them may have different names, but that's what they are. And their job is to keep you as a customer. And they will offer you a discount, a deal, something along those lines to keep you. You're now saving more money. Nobody really does this very much. Maybe just me, because I'm a geek. But um, definitely review your budget once a quarter and compare it to your spending habits. Are you in line with your budget? Hopefully you're doing even better than your budget and hopefully you're not overspending. So once a quarter I change all my passwords and I review my budget to make sure I'm where I want to be. Are there areas where you can cut back further? you notice that you're still spending money on a want and you're not using that want anymore as an example. Even if it's only 10 bucks or 9 bucks, that's going to add up. If you are overspending, do you need to adjust your budget? Do you need to change what you're allocating to certain things? Review, adapt, change, and save. Living more simply does not mean you're giving up everything. And it doesn't mean that you can't be happy. I'm extremely happy. Actually, I'm happier than I've been in a long, long time because I now have a handle on my money. And if you don't have a handle on your money, it's going to have a handle on you. Someone said that. I'm paraphrasing, but I can't remember who it was. You're not giving up happiness. You're not giving up a quality of life. You are just focusing on what is most important to you and what your financial goals are. You will have more peace of mind and you will be a much more calm and peaceful person and be able to sleep at night. As Thomas Jefferson said, never spend your money before you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, subscribe, say hello. Tell me what you thought of it. Tell me if there's anything you do that's different. I appreciate it. Have a great afternoon.